In the early colonial years of America, there weren't many restrictions by Great Britain as long as they didn't do anything that would be in the intent of usurping the power of the king's rule over the colonial regions. Thus, this gave the colonists the freedom to do what they pleased. Although, as time went on and America continued to flourish, certain leaders decided to abuse the power they had received from the people and chose to use the powers unjustly. This documentary is an overview of one key event that occurred over 200 years ago in the year 1735. In the case of John Peter Zenger, he was writing about a corrupt politician that had abused his power for far too long, and by Zenger addressing the politician's faults, he was arrested for libel. That fateful year brought about enormous change in the form that all people should be allowed the inherent right to express themselves in any way, such as John Peter Zenger did in the court case of the trial of John Peter Zenger. John, John Peter Zinger was, was born in Hodgson, Germany, Germany, circa 1697. 1697. In his early teens, his father decided to take the family to America in search of a better life for his family and his son, Peter. On the voyage, though, Zinger's father became deathly ill and came to die before they arrived. When they finally reached America, they came to arrive in the province of New York. Zinger then became an apprentice of the publisher William Bradford of the Gazette. The New York Gazette was founded in 1725 and for many years was the province's only newspaper. It was published by the public printer William Bradford and was supportive of the governor and his administration. Seven years after his apprenticeship, Zenger begins the New York Weekly Journal, the only other newspaper being his former masters. Now, Zenger was not like William Bradford in the sense that he disapproved of Governor Cosby, since the governor had done things such as fire New York's Chief Judge Lewis Morris for ruling in a case not in favor of Governor Cosby. By Cosby doing this, he incited the creation of the New York Weekly Journal, with the members of it being New Zenger as the newspaper's printer, along with Lewis Morris, attorneys James Alexander and William Smith, with Alexander being the editor of the newspaper. In their articles, they came to accuse the governor of tyranny and as a violator of people's rights. In response to Governor Cosby enduring two months of Zinger's accusations, he came to have John Peter Zinger arrested and sent to jail. Another action that he decided to take was to burn the newspapers before they were able to be distributed to the New York populace. That week, the newspaper missed one publication, but the week after, they rectified this by printing an apology and explanation as to why they failed to publish the New York Weekly Journal the previous week. And Mr. Mr. Zinger's trial, trial, he caught upon two, two lawyers, lawyers, one of them being Alexander. Of them being Alexander. Unfortunately, he Unfortunately, came to be disbarred from the case by him stating that the, judge, him of the, that the judge of the case was biased. The defense then engaged the Pennsylvania lawyer of great repute, Pennsylvania lawyer of great repute, who came to show that the attempt to prosecute a newspaper came to show that the attempt to prosecute a newspaper in New York had become an issue in other colonies. Andrew Hamilton defended Zinger in court against the charges that Governor Cosby had placed on him. From the beginning of the case, the judge the told the jury that Mr. Zinger had committed an the judge told the jury that Mr. Zinger had committed an unlawful act and should be convicted immediately. Mr. Hamilton told the jury that they should ignore the judge's instruction and that they should acquit Zinger of the charges in the name of the freedom of press. Yet, under the common law, the case against Zinger was open and shut. The judge declared Zinger's publication to be a libel as a matter of law and instructed the jury to convict Zinger if he published it. He argued, is a right, which all freemen claim, and are entitled to complain when they are hurt. They have a right publicly to remonstrate the abuses of power in the strongest terms, to put their neighbors upon their guard against the craft or open violence of men in authority, and to assert the, with courage the sense they have of the blessings of liberty, the value they put upon it, and their resolution at all hazards to preserve it, as one of the greatest blessings heaven can bestow. During the case, Hamilton did admit that the journal had indeed printed the libel that was directed towards Governor Cosby, but the matter of the fact was that all that was written in that newspaper was true. He attempted to bring Zinger's writings as evidence to the case, but the judge firmly denied it to be shown to the jury. 
After he made that point, the prosecution argued that you can't defend the charges against Mr. Zinger of sedition by simply saying that they were true. Hamilton tempered this argument by asserting that truth ought to govern the whole affair of libels, although during that time, he didn't state in his argument that what Zinger had written was true. In fact, during the case, the judge overseeing ruled that none of Zinger's publications be used as evidence of the truth by Hamilton. During his argument in defending Zinger, he did not state the explicit truth about certain statements, but instead discussed a more general principle. Mr. Hamilton ended his argument with charging the jury to determine whether or not the law that Zinger had broken was in any way just. After the closing statements had been made, the jury was sent to deliberate the verdict of the case. In a matter of only minutes, the jury came back to give the verdict that John Peter Zinger was found not guilty of sedulous libel and should be acquitted of all charges. He was then released to continue to print a newspaper that now re represents the fact that people are allowed to express themselves through the medium of newspapers. Now, you may be wondering how all of the information that I've just told you ties into the overall theme of the rights and responsibilities of my topic involving the freedom of press in Mr. Zinger's trial. Well, in the case of what happened at the end of his trial, it illustrated a key event that helped lay the foundation for the future American government to use to address public concerns involving the writing of the Constitution in 1787. To be more specific, it helped shed some light on what nation's leaders should do to write a document that would be capable of securing the people's basic rights and build a government that would preserve the country for centuries to come. As to come back to how this involves the rights and responsibilities of John Peter Zinger and the freedom of press, I can focus on two things. First off, all people have the right to speak their mind without fearing that someone will attempt to suppress their voice later on, although there are some responsibilities that come along with that inherent right to express yourself. One example could be used that you can't use slander, especially if it is inaccurate or false, as it could lead to those words you said permanently ruining someone else's life forever. The second point I want to come to is the fact that we the people have the right to speak up when we feel an injustice has been committed against ourselves, a fellow citizen, or even a foreign country. Without us having that right already available to us, many problems that exist to the common man would not matter in the eyes of our nation's government. The main reason is since the people would not have the power to speak their mind on what needs to change for them to be able to better both themselves, but the community around them. But, by the government having the power to suffocate the voice of the people, or just to ignore it, they could basically live in their own world where they are surrounded by luxuries and they only address the concerns of the wealthy and what would benefit them the most. So, by us having this right available to us, we have been able to usurp the oligarchy that has been ever present in many countries around the world in our modern day society. To conclude, through John Peter Zinger's trial that he faced, that came to address the issue of whether or not it is both lawful and ethical to call out the higher powers that are found in our society on what they have done wrong, and that they should fix it before it endangers the people's rights to express themselves in any manner we see fit. But it should also be known that we, as a citizen of the United States, should be aware of the fact that we should be careful how and what we express, or it could lead to severe consequences since it can interfere with anyone else's freedoms in the process. As a result, Zeng was able to open up the way for future people to use the ideas that he had been trying to court for, so it could be later used to help our early nation's leaders write the most important document in the history of the American government that not only changed the Constitution, but came to help set an international standard for all nations around the world for governments that exist in them today.